and uh i was just like i'll come back and play over here somewhere so just came back but i do with tkn i don't know that i've heard about that story we met later what was that I was just asking how you got hooked in with TKN because I know we met a little bit later when you were like up for renewal and stuff like that. But how did you get, get hooked in and find out about it? Um, through the gym. So I own, well, I owned San Jose Barbell uh, from 2013. I opened that gym and then uh, I leased it out to a friend of mine in 2021. Um, and so I met uh who did i meet first person i met was nick nick peterson back in like i want to say like 2016 and he put me in touch with uh the early gym launch days uh with alex did that that's how i met uh dr cashy and then i was just like after i heard dr cashy speak for the first time i was like dr cashy what's up like get me more jacked <laughs> Yeah, so San Jose Barbell, was that strength and conditioning? Was it CrossFit? It was strength and conditioning, yeah, yeah. Like uh, a pretty, like, barbell gym? Yeah, um, so a lot of semi-privates, uh, small group classes and stuff. Um, we ran, uh, you know uh, Martin Rooney? Yeah. So we, we, we ran, like, uh, training for Warriors uh, programs out of there. Uh, we had our own programming. We had a, we had a pretty big powerlifting community. Uh, my business partner is like, he's like, he's super deep into it. Like he, he has a few records and he's like, I want to say he's like five, seven, once one fifty five. Uh, it's like, I think his best is like six fifty deadlift and like, he's, he was all about it. So we had a pretty big, uh, community around that um how'd you meet well huh did you compete in powerlifting as well i know we talked a little bit about internet culture and stuff right yeah no i didn't you know why because i was like i had planned on it to start off um i i started working with alberto nunez uh back way back in 2013 and so we were kind of talking about things and i was like you know uh bodybuilding powerlifting and i was like ah you know what i want to do bodybuilding and then I was like, fuck, man, I'm way too small. And there's, there's no way, like, like, I just, no matter how strong I got, I didn't get any bigger. And I was like, all right, this, and then I was like, okay, let's do powerlifting. That, that sounds more along my thing. But then I gotta give you guys props because I'm like, I don't, the reason I like basketball is you just show up and you play. Like, there's no you don't need to do all this prep and like you got to go and weigh in and then you got to get your singlet and you got to do this. And I'm like, and then your event is like, it's done. I'm like, I like basketball. I can just show up and I can play for three hours and I'm good. You know? Um, yeah. Like it's something a little bit chiller about that. Right. Like this self, there's, there's a certain self importance to it that I think like at a certain point, it's like, eh, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> I love, I mean, I fucking loved uh, just getting strong. Like, fuck, like that changed my life. Um, yes. I'm like, can I just look good and be strong? And so that was one thing I would like try to tell people too, because everybody wanted to do it. And I'm like, didn't you, you like, all you really want to do is look good and feel good. Like you don't need to do this whole thing because it looks like it's adding more stress to you and you're missing the point too. Like, kind of doing some stupid things uh because everybody would always want to talk about weight cuts and shit like that and i'm like yes and, and pushing, pushing too much for um uh one rep maxes like just chasing the one rep and not i'm like dude your one rep is gonna like is gonna be a result of your training like it's not what you are looking for in every session you know what i mean yeah chasing the number begs the question why yeah. In a very real way. And for most of us, you know what I blame? Do you remember speaking of the early forums? I know you wanted to cover this. I blame starting strength. Do you remember that? Yep. And yep. that wasn't that long ago. No. It's been like we were all like, how do I get big for girls? Yeah. And here's this like random, like, 
older gentleman, a little portly, who's like, you need to drink a gallon of milk a day. <laughs> I, you know, did you ever do that? Of course. Did you not? Of course. <laughs> All right. It's like a rite of passage. Everybody did. Yeah, I did next level because I went to boarding school, like I told you. They had chocolate milk dispensers. So I would take Nalgene's and fill them bad boys up with chocolate milk. Damn. <laughs> Sitting in class drinking chocolate milk. But uh, but what was your like? What was your experience and results with it? Well, I put on weight, right? No question about it. And like, as somebody who I think you had similar challenges being skinny fat and also smaller frame, right? Yep. And there's a sense of like you put on the weight, so that's amazing. But then you think about it, you're like, I don't know that I look like I lift weights now. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Uh, I, you uh so actually we just jumped right in but what uh why don't you introduce give a little backstory and a little uh, uh, mini autobiography um uh this is by the way if you're just joining or you just jumped into our conversation we just jumped into the conversation but this is charles needham um and we uh are we met through uh tkn uh dr trevor cashew's program and um, we just kind of bullshit and uh, talk about the good old days. Actually, I don't want to say the good old days, but like all the history of like the fitness culture that, you know, we, we all share. And uh, I was like, dude, we just got to talk about this. So does that, that take it away? Take it away. Cool. So I guess for purposes of the uh, fitness culture conversation, right? I went to a boarding school and it was a whopping and terrifying 129 pounds at graduation. So I graduated high school at 129 pounds. And you're five uh, eleven? Yeah, yeah. So like 5'10, 5 5'11, 5 about 129 pounds. And uh, you know, definitely an environment where it doesn't pay to be like small and like puny, right? <laughs> So I kind of got into like the early forums, like had a buddy was on the football team was like, I'm doing this starting strength thing. I'm tired of seeing people be beat you up. Like, come on, come with me. I was like, Oh, hell yeah. Right. And then just going in there and then like the early bodybuilding miss forum days, ordering the supplements there. And then like the, we had like a nurse station and they would ship the mail first to the nurses to clear it. So like they would be opening my boxes, be like, talk to me about this creatine. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be like, look at pre-workout, be like, no, no, caffeine. And I'd be like yelling at them, you know, so like early origin days, uh, OG Jack 3D, you remember that stuff? Yep, yep. Just like multi-scooping that one, like rolling up on the gym. Uh, <laughs> you, you definitely had those experiences, man. I feel like that's like a shared like common point, you know? Yeah. How old are you? Now? Yeah. 28. Okay, so we're we're we have overlap. I'm 35, but like there's there's a good overlap there. Um, so what year did you start? What what year was that? It was like 2009, 10. Yeah, uh, like eight, nine, ten, somewhere around there. So I've probably been lifting since I was like 15 or so, 15, 16. Yeah. Uh, I, I. Started looking at stuff in like 2005 and six, zero, nothing, no results, no nothing. I didn't get, I didn't find anything, but I remember looking around and I was like, oh shit, you know, maybe, maybe one day. Uh, but okay, so you, you went to boarding school and you graduated at 129. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's fluctuations, right? But the classic, like five by five, it was like the five by five cycle. Whereas like, all right, now it's time to get strong and then eat a bunch. So then you would just get fat really fast, right? Yeah. Then it's like, all right, spring break is coming up or like something, who knows? Intermittent fasting, like yeah. going through that whole thing just to end up like the same way, you know, just like repeating that over and over. So either picking between like being fat and small and like fat and like slightly more filled out. Just like yep. the classic cycle. Yep. Well, at least... Did, but did you look, so here's the thing for, for me, it was always, uh, I just was like, I was just skinny fat. And then I was like, man, I, I'm like drinking all this milk and whatever. And I'm like, now I'm just fucking fat. I'm like, this is not, <laughs> this is not helping. <laughs> yes. Yes. 
Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then, and then what? So you, where'd you go to college? So then I went to William and Mary down okay. in Virginia. Uh, I think at that time, heavily into powerlifting, right? Like a lot of other people I was, Oh, here's a fun one. I think for people who didn't grow up with traditional athletic backgrounds, things like the bench press were very hard. Yeah. Right. But then I don't know about you, but I found out that I was a pretty good deadlift. Same. Right. Like it was always pretty easy, but the flip side to that is it never actually did anything to build muscle either. Nope. So I'm sure you, like a lot of people got very large deadlifts and then like, you know, you'd have friends like this guy deadlifts this much. And you're like, I, I promise I really do. Yeah. Yeah, like my arms no small, but I, I really deadlift a lot, dude. Hundred percent the same. Which I was like, which at at the time I was like, I don't get it. I just deadlifted. You know, uh, I went from back pain to in the first year of lifting, and like I had really bad back pain in high school and college, even though I was playing basketball. Um, doctors couldn't figure it out. Whatever they were just like, don't do anything. Like you know the typical response, right? And then um, the first year, like literally 30 days into lifting, I went to, I joined Jason Kalipa's CrossFit over here and 30 days into lifting, no more back pain. And within six months, I hit a 400 pound deadlift. And, you know, I, I got up to about uh, like 495 over the years. And I would always be like, but why am I still 155 pounds? <laughs> I'm like, why how did you uh get started in lifting would you say you came in through like football bodybuilding crossfit like what was the, the entry point for you um it was uh two things it was uh kettlebells uh that was like my first ever strength and conditioning thing ever like the first time Pavel. oh yeah the dragon door stuff yep yes that that was my intro. Um, and then CrossFit 2008. Okay. That's yep. kind of interesting. So like you came in very much through a very specific modality, like, like why kettlebells of all things? Like Dude, what led you there? I, I, I can't remember the guy's name, uh, but he was one of the first uh, YouTube fitness guys. He's a little Filipino guy but he was just fucking shredded and super strong. And I was like, mm. and I was like, I, I need that. And so that's where I started to kind of look for, you know, that's how I got into Pavel. Um, and then, cause actually traditional lifting never, like I was not like, it didn't work out for me. Cause I never had a good coach. Like we had shitty coaches, my, my entire high school, college, and, uh, you know, Pavel does, he has like, has like really good stuff. And I was like, oh, this makes sense to me. So that's, that's how I ended up there. And I was actually looking, there's, a, there's probably a thread somewhere on uh, T Nation where I'm like, hey guys, does anybody know if there's a powerlifting gym in San Jose? <laughs> oh, dude, the classic, right? So we had those like community resources that I guess it's interesting because it's become so much more widespread, but so much more decentralized as a result. And I feel like that's really hurt that sense of community. Yeah. Right. Like it's become more and more spread out as opposed to like, you went to T nation. There was an article that day. Yep. We're in the comments of the article that day and everybody else who posted in those comments were there, but there was like a town square component to it. Yeah. Same, same with the bodybuilding.com. Yes, like, or the logs, dude, like, the effort that went into those logs now, like, most of those people are probably copywriters now, right, like, it's kind of funny to see, because, like, I think even Alex Hormozzi, right, was one of, like, he was fairly involved in powerlifting. At yeah, so, yeah. Like, all that overlap there is actually very interesting. Um, yeah, it's, it's so funny. Um, did you, uh, so how did you end up getting into powerlifting? Cause, and tell a little bit about that because you're fucking strong as shit and you're not 129 anymore. Yeah. So I guess powerlifting was, uh, kind of like the logic, like the, the thing with the deadlift gone wrong, right. It's kind of like, well, if lifting weights will make me big, then lifting the most weights will make me the most big. Right. 
and then following that thought process, but finding at the end of that road only uh, injured joints, uh, disappointment, and nihilism. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, if I can lift this number, then maybe I should lift a bigger number. And following that kind of circularly, right? And I mean, there is cool stuff, right? Like there's benefits to learning how to program training, um, execute movements well, uh, developing general coordination and strength from barbell movements. Like we talked a little bit about earlier, barbells are awesome for people starting out because there's so much bang for buck. Yeah. It's a good way to show people how to move under load. Um, it's pretty safe to load in small increments. There's all these benefits, but if you end up chasing that for its own end, without asking why it can get very pointless very quickly yeah you know but it's been cool to see the sport evolve like powerlifting as a sport and just seeing people push the boundaries of what's possible there and being willing to take that risk it's extraordinary to watch you know like and seeing people committed to that but at the same time if you just want to be jacked the risk to return ratio is just not there if you want to do other stuff with your life the risk to return ratio is not there and so if the beginning was doing that to get in shape and look good, what's the point? Yep. Right. There's easier, easier routes for sure. And you went through that with CrossFit, right? Because CrossFit there, you have to learn so much very specific skill sets. Like for example, gymnastics, how many people blow their pecs doing like muscle ups? And in most cases, most of those people showed up just because they want to look good in like a wedding dress. Yeah. And like, why do you have Tina ripping muscle ups doing yet yeah, or or doing uh snatches for right. high reps and whatnot yes exactly but you know the cool thing because me and one of my good buddies he actually introduced me to that crossfit he's a acting buddy of mine uh one of my best friends we we talk about this sometimes those early days of crossfit same as like the forums there was this community that it was like we we didn't like it we all went there to look good that's what we were there for but then we would just hang out all day i remember we did i don't know if you remember seal fit but we did like double days and like three times a week and like work out six days a week and we were just there like yeah people were like don't you guys have anything i was like nope this is (laughs) we got to do our other workout bro (laughs) <laughs> oh, exactly. Yeah. It was about being a part of that and like pushing each other. Yeah. Right. And there is a sense of community that I think maybe existed only in the absence of the ability to make it about you. Right. Yeah. Like when you, it requires so much effort to write on a forum that in most cases people don't do it. Yeah. But now it's so easy to film yourself, put it yeah. up, that, that becomes the focus. Whereas like, like you were talking about just like doing dumb workouts for the sake of it, right? Like double days. We did a lot of dumb shit. Stuff. What, was the, what was the dumbest workout thing you did? <laughs> let, let me pull out my, you know, mile long sheet. Uh, but one of the dumbest ones, shit. Oh, I remember in the open, the CrossFit open in 2009 or 10, the first year they started doing it online um the workout was it was a certain amount of snatches and then once you complete that then you move into a certain amount of muscle ups and I don't remember if there was one there was like three things and the muscle ups were the last the weird thing was I got my first muscle up on day number two like there's there's still a video on CrossFit HQ of Jason Kalipa teaching me how to do a muscle up and I'm I'll have to pull it out if I can find it when one of these days, but day two, and you know how Jason is like, yeah, come on, bro. We got it. We're going to do this. And I was like, okay. And then, so I did the first muscle up and, and everybody was trying to like, the muscle up was the thing to like, if you could do a muscle up, like fucking you're the man, but the snatch, I remember I was so fucking like, despite all this, I was weak as shit. Like I could not, like I wasn't very strong. I got deadlift and I could squat decent, but overall I was still like a bag of bones. Like I just did not, I just didn't have the strength yet. Um, in some of those, like, uh, some of those types of movements. And so I'm thinking about getting ready for this workout and I'm like, 
this, I, th- I want to say it was like 95 pound or no, maybe it was a 135 pound snatch. And I remember how many reps, like maybe 21 or whatever. It was, that's a pretty, that's pretty. Ooh. And um, I knew I couldn't do that or I would struggle with it and it would take me a long time. But rather than, I don't even know why I was like, uh, no thought process, whatever. I was like, yeah, let me work on more muscle ups. Although I could do probably like 20 muscle ups no problem but i just did so many fucking muscle ups that week or whatever by the time i got to the workout my sh- i fucked my shoulders up so bad like so i didn't, it was like didn't even like complete the workout but it's just so you overdid it practicing the movement to the point that you couldn't perform the movement on the day of i, I but here's the dumb part i did the movement that i already had in the bag but it was the last movement so i I wasn't going to get to it anyway. It's like, I didn't need to practice it, you know? <laughs> well, why do you think you did that? Was it like an ego thing possibly? Like you're like, I'm already good at it. These are fun to do. Like I might as well, like I'm preparing, right? hundred percent. It was all, it was all ego. I was like, I loved, I, man, I love just doing this shit. And people are like, oh my God, Rambeer. Because my entire life, I was the weakest fucking guy in the room. So it's that's, like- That's the other thing, right? Like the people that got into- I think barbell sports and these kinds of stuff on the whole, were not people who were athletic to begin with. Yeah. In other words, people who had athletic backgrounds who either went on to play in college or at a very minimum had a weight room culture that came from team sports. And it sounds like you, like me, although you did play basketball, right? Yeah. Maybe not as prevalent there as something like football. Yeah. Well, so I, I was athletic just in the sense of like, I kept, like forcing my body to do shit uh but the frame couldn't handle it so like i pretty much forced myself to dunk by like i was like 19 but that was what led to all the back back problems because my frame could not take that amount of work that i was doing so were you uh, on those dunk programs you remember those oh you know, my man yes yes did you did you play basketball at all or no no, but I was always curious about those people who didn't play basketball, but made it like a goal to be able to dunk and then like increasingly like esoteric objects. Like, you know, the people that watch me dunk <laughs> and I'm like, you trained a lot for this. Why? Yeah. Yeah. Did, do you, did you ever do any of those? Air alert? Max Vert, right? Was that another Max, one? Max Vert, Air Alert, Air Alert 2 um <laughs> jump souls Air alert too yeah <laughs> uh, jump souls do you remember those it sounds like space jam sequels dude they should be that's true the, the jump souls were the things in front of the shoe that you know like you put it on your shoe and it was like this raised platform and people would be walking around with them all day wait tell me more this is fascinating i don't i don't remember this one so jump souls was i have to show you a picture of this oh, uh, yeah. But Pull that up. it was this thing that people would, it was these platforms that people would put on their shoes um, to that were supposedly going to help you dunk. Uh, I don't know a single person who got their first dunk because of jump soles, including myself. Well, what, what was the conception? Was it like progressive overload where it's like, hey, you don't have to jump as far, shorty? Or was it like, this is like a spring? Like, okay, what is this supposed to do? You were supposed to do all these workouts with these on, like biometrics and whatnot. So were they weighted? No. Well, they had weight, but the purpose wasn't like, like, oh, they're weighted. So they're going to, you're going to get stronger. You would just do all these fucking, (laughs) this is so. (laughs) I guess I just like, I don't understand how it purports to work. You know, I think it was just like all plyo stuff, but on a raised platform. Oh, <laughs> and and so and so you would have the guys. It would be the same thing. Like, oh, if I if getting stronger means I'll get bigger, let me get more. You know, add more strength or whatever. This was the same thing. If I wear these for three workouts a week, I'm supposed to jump higher. But if I wear them all day, every day, <laughs> more vert. Wait, so people would walk around in these? Yep. Yep. Like in public? In public. 
That's fascinating. So you were doing these and was it uh, a resistance training component as well? Or is it all like jumping around on these things? Just jumping around plyos, dude. Just that's it. Man. Um, but that's actually perfect segue into one of the, you know, the things that we were talking about, like the old uh, bodybuilding magazines and programs and stuff. Uh, oh, yeah, dude, those were awesome. A lot of those aren't around anymore, right? Isn't MD gone? I'm sure it's around in some form, uh, muscular development. Yeah. Were you, uh, which ones did you read? Uh, first of all, which ones did I not read? Fair. But there was muscular development. There was, uh, fucking damn. I'm not, I'm not going to remember the name. Flex, right. Obviously flex. Um, I just remember, I just remember looking at the, uh, or all the ridiculous articles. Muscle there was all fitness. Muscle and fitness, flex. Yes. I remember muscle insider. But these were just like muscle and fitness. Uh, did I tell you about the one? Oh, talk about stupid workouts. One of these had one program that said add one inch to your biceps in 24 hours. Did I tell you about that? Well, did you did you attempt it? Yep, at the YMCA. I was so in there. I'm guessing the strategy was create DOMs so crippling with the resulting inflammation. Could add an inch. If you couldn't move your arms, but on a tape measure, you were probably good. If you yeah. really be nice about how you measured too. Yeah. yeah. Is that what happened pretty much? No, I I I remember it was like you there was there were like multiple workouts throughout the day and all this stuff. And you were supposed to eat a certain amount. I don't remember what like the meals were and drink a shit ton of water. My guess is like it was just supposed to get you just this massive pump and all the inflammation to add an inch. And I'm like, and I actually was like, maybe this will work. And I remember around like 6 p.m. I was like, fuck this. And then I was like, this is not working. So I just went, I went home. It's, it's such a shame, like looking back, right? Like, I'm glad I didn't feel this way then because it would have been so cynical. But looking back in hindsight, it was like, put an inch on your arms in 24 hours. Like, all right, cool. Like, I got to check this out. It's like, Mr. Olympia winner, Sean Roden, once used this workout when he was very depleted and then ate a whole bunch of stuff after. And by the way, he was Mr. Olympia and he put on a, a inch on the measuring tape within that time. You should do it and you'll get the same results. I was like, yeah, that, that, that makes sense, right? Being like a teenager, you're like, of course it worked for him. It's gonna work for me. It's like, but I'm not Mr. Olympia, bro. Yeah. and. And even if you didn't, they're just like, what can we write today? Well, it's the similar to like today's, you know, content. Well, not just fitness, but everything is like people need to create content. So they just like, what can I make up that might have usually has like zero relevance to anything is not like you're just making things up to make content. Adding more shit that actually doesn't contribute to what you're trying to do, you know? um it's it's silly crazy um what are some examples you see of that like in terms of fitness branding that falls under that criteria um i just saw one this is not fitness related but it's from a fitness guy maybe maybe you saw this ad uh but you know the keto guy what's his name something carter um uh, it's black guys Oh, different. oh, Brandon. Brandon. Yeah. Um, it's been around forever. He's been around for a long time. But, and, you know, I don't like to talk negatively about anybody, but I'm just like, I just was, somebody sent this to me and I was like, why are you sending me this? He had a reel on Instagram that said, 90, and he was dead serious, 95% of the richest men in the world uh don't have beards and his whole premise was <laughs> not having a beard equals making a lot of money he's like that's why people ask me brandon why don't you have a beard that's why i don't have a beard i was like 
I was like, this is real. Like, this is, re this is really real. <laughs> well, there's also a, a sense of no, no attention is bad attention. Right. So being able to stay relevant requires being able to stay top of mind. And sometimes staying top of mind doesn't necessarily correspond with giving the best, most nuanced information because you don't have that time. Like you have TikTok now, things are good. People are scrolling by in 15 seconds. Dude. Right? So even if the reaction is like, what the? Like it's better than nothing. Yeah. As long as they know your name and you get more attention, you're, you're good. I'll, but you know what? So you're in, this is why one of the reasons I was like, I need to work with Dr. Cashy because what he shares is so valuable and makes things so clear yeah and eliminates like a lot of my philosophies and like thought processes of course i'm sure it's the same for you is like i can even hear it as as you say things <laughs> is is from dr cashy hugely yeah hugely i was lucky enough to get uh hooked up with him very very early on so do you remember the the strength training blog called chaos and pain dude what a world. What a world. What, what was his name? Uh, super fucking strong guy. Uh, forget his name. Jamie Lewis, you were thinking of. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was, I think, big for the early powerlifting thing as well. Yeah. And it's crazy to see how much the sport has evolved. It was, I miss that. I feel like early powerlifting, and I sound like an old, like back in my day, right? But there was a kind of like Kumite aspect to it. Like yeah. you would get a random guy who was like, that boy is the biggest shot putter in Mississippi. Let's put him under a barbell, right? <laughs> the guy's like, do I wear, like Chad Wesley Smith, for example. Yeah, like, he yeah. was like, oh, like I go lift like the way I do for shot putting and like just one time in my Nikes, like, and they're like, okay. Yeah. And then you had guys who were like wrestlers who like lifted weights and were like, oh, let's see about this powerlifting thing, right? So yeah. you had like so much diversity. You had like the West Side barbell guys, right? Like you had this such diversity but the trade-off with the monoculture of the internet is I feel like everything's the same. It's people in oversized t-shirts and like reels, you know? So like that kind of the culture being turned into one thing, it's kind of different. You still there? Yeah. Uh, I didn't catch that last sentence. I was just saying that like the trade-off is that we have stronger athletes now, I think, but there's less rebellion in thought and less originality and less questioning uh, yeah for sure for sure so there's a trade-off but fun to see yeah i mean it's just the evolution um what's so give me uh what's your like current philosophy uh there and then there's other there's a few other areas i want to touch on but uh what's your current philosophy and how has it evolved uh, from from the uh, go mad days? Oh, training philosophy. Yeah. So I I describe it like this. I think training and aligning your life around intentional body composition is awesome. I respect people who take that to an extreme and take it to the stage, and. I think so many of the problems we see in the fitness space with everyday people trying to get in shape and like you run into this all the time, right? They see number two is what they have to do to have number one. And so for me, I really, and as a really critical part of my day, I almost think of it like, it's almost like a form of worship, right? Like I, I'm a lot, I have this body and I can do things with it and my ability to progressively load weight and master those movement patterns against gravity yields a different look. And then aligning my life around health in a way that I can maximize that time, right? Like all those things line up for a really positive life orientation, I like to think. And so I like to, whenever people ask about like fitness and stuff like that, encourage that aspect, like how it can fit into your life versus you have to disrupt your life to have that. And people mix those two up and then don't get the results they want. Yeah, a hundred percent. That That's so true. Um... What what are you doing nowadays, actually, for your own training? I just do a push pull legs, man. So like, simple. The goal is progression, right? And finding ways to creatively make that progression while minimizing injury risk. 
And so at some point, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm sure coming from CrossFit, coming from powerlifting, I obsessed forever about how to get my bench to go up. Here's a list of things I thought of. Changing my grip width, increasing my arch, doing flexibility exercises to increase my arch, finding different wrist wraps, changing my elbow angle. And then I was just like, wait a minute. If I'm sitting in this room right now with a bunch of dudes, I bet you I could look at the person who had the biggest bench press and guess them with a very high degree of probability. Yeah. Why? Because he's jacked, because he's good at using his chest. Yeah. And then I was like, wait a minute, if I can just increase the demand I put on my chest safely over time, I'll probably get a bigger chest. And then I was like, oh, there's so much crap around this. Yeah. Right? And like, to your point too, like, I know a lot of your content focuses around um, how you can fit fitness into your life, not even in the sense of changing what you do, but looking at what you do differently. Yeah. And that way you're able to make better choices that align with what you want to do anyway. Right? Yeah. Yep. But, and again, heavily influenced from like guys like Nick and, and Dr. Cashy. Um, Cause yeah, like the, and, and people try to do this, like, my day is ridiculous like right now i'm trying to this year the whole focus is how can i eliminate and delegate as much of my stuff as possible and but in the time being i have to do these things and so like how am i gonna if i was like let's say go back to like the crossfit days or even like the early days of owning the gym uh um I would be like, no, I gotta work. I gotta work out. I gotta do. That. I don't have time. I need to do this. But it's like, oh, I I know how to fit what I need to do in order to get what I want into this current life uh, lifestyle. Yeah, and it makes it so much, you know, more peaceful. Um, right. Yeah. We see that all the time. People come in, they're like, well, I wanted to lose ten pounds, so I signed up for a marathon, and it's like. <laughs> What? Like, ma'am, might I remind you that the marathon was named after an event in which the founder of the event, the first person to do it, died. <laughs> it necessary for you to lose 10 pounds? Yeah. Maybe we can figure something easier out, right? But like yeah. that idea that fitness has to be like difficult for it to count, right? And like count to who is the other thing. Like if you're just like, oh, I just want to lose 10 pounds, you're like, ah. It is like justify, right? I'm running a marathon. Oh, good for you. Yeah. And now it becomes this whole thing. But because people see it as so difficult, they just never start. Yeah. Well, they make it difficult. That's, that's what I loved about finding Pavel and Dan John and those guys early on. Because I remember this one, like this line stuck out to me. I don't remember if it was, it was one of those guys. It's like, you should not, you should leave the gym feeling better and stronger. You know, I could do more than, oh, I'm like, I need to, I can't leave the gym unless I'm like dying. I'm um, glad you brought up Dan John. Did you ever read his book? Which one? Um, I can remember the cover. Cause like, it still stands out in my mind. It's him, I think doing a sled drag. Or like he's carrying a rock or something, and it's called like "Don't Let Go." Oh, don't let go! There is "Don't Let Go." Don't let go. Yeah, "Don't Let Go" was great, and I don't think I appreciated enough at the time. Like when you're younger, right? You're like, "That's bullshit, Dan John. You're not hardcore enough. Five three one doesn't have enough volume. I train six times a week, twice a day. Like you're (laughs) you're a pussy, Dan John. Right? Like I'll never get like that. And then even like ten years later, you're like. Man, I was a dickhead when I was younger. You you know, it's an interesting thing because it's like there, there's there's true understanding and mastery comes it's it's tough because if you're seeking it, you find it over time. If you're not, then you're in one of those two camps of like, you know, and then you miss, then you miss the path, right? Um, I remember while we were doing all these crazy things and my, my mind was like, no, I, I was like, you couldn't tell me like, otherwise I was like, I need to do more because I'm not getting what I want. So I need to do even more, but I'm reading Dan John stuff and Powell stuff. I'm like, 
this makes a lot of sense. And so there was this like, you know, opposing ideas or whatever, which eventually was like, okay, this makes sense. Um, and the willingness to just question and, and like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Um, that's what it is, right? Because more doesn't require you to refute what you already know. You're just like, so some more of what I already know, like stubborn, right? Like I can, like, there's a certain like desire to take control there, but like, what if I'm wrong? Ooh, that's a tough one. And what happens if I am, and I find out, you know, what are the possibilities? What if I could get better results exponentially by doing way less? That's an interesting possibility, but what do you think about that? Because I think I, I, cause I think about this a lot. I'm like, I think the reason it's difficult is because I'm like, if I relax and let go, there's this thing of like, I'm not going to see those results for, I don't know, three months, six months, 12 months. And I'm impatient. I need to see something now. Whereas if I kill myself and I'll be, oh man, that's such a good workout. I felt that within, you know, within that hour, you know? So, I mean, that comes back to essentially what, what Dr. Cashy talks about, right? Which is that uh, you would kind of have two schools, which is like, there are people who say, oh, I'm just going to give up. Like, I don't see the short term. And then there are people who like, you know, you have to be hardcore. Like, it doesn't matter if you don't see it in the short term. But the reality is what you choose to reinforce yourself or you have control over. Right. And in the same way, you can gamify that as well. You can make a big deal out of the small steps. There's nothing stopping you from doing that. So developing the systems to reward yourself when you track a certain number of times. Like think of apps. Like, you know how my fitness pal does that? Like you logged in two months, like 60 days in a row. And you're like, fuck yeah. Like I'm yeah. a man. Right. Like that's like little examples of like things to take advantage of. And like seeing graphs. And like there's all these things you can do to make doing those small things fun. And he calls it, I think, sweat the small stuff. Yeah. Dude, the first time I broke my MyFitnessPal streak, I was so sad. <laughs> it's terrible, right? Because they also send you a push notification where they're like, do you want to throw this all away? You've done this 230 days in a row. You're like, oh, no, I don't. Oh, man. I When I started... Uh, and actually this is great i, I want to know your nutrition uh thought process back in the day but i was like first the first time i ever got ripped it was i started doing crossfit and i just was like okay i'm gonna eat meat and vegetables only not i didn't know about calories nothing turn i was like oh it's meat and vegetables got shredded fucking shredded and then the first time I started tracking was because of Alberto. And he was like, we're going to eat 250 grams of carbs. And I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to get fat. And he was like, and I was like, this is what I think. And he's like, well, you know, eat some fun carbs and watch what happens. And so from that moment, I got even more shredded, but I was tracking everything. And I think it was like three years later when I missed a login day and i was like what was it all for <laughs> and then like internalized for you at some point it just become like a process that was continuous yeah 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 but it's still just seeing that streak was like part of my like that's part of, it becomes part of your all these things that you know you make as part of your identity which i mean doesn't that's not who you are your identity you know what i mean um but uh what what uh what what nutrition uh stories do you have from the early days so it's interesting you bring up the meat and vegetables things right because looking back there were some really big dudes who were really jacked and really scary looking who were scared shitless of carbs why uh, the hell were we all so scared of carbs i have no idea but I remember when I started working with, I, I call him Trevor when I like reference when we were working together, like, you know, like way back in the day. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm really worried about these carbs you have like prescribed here. Like, will you explain this to me? Right. Like, I'm very concerned. Yeah. Like, All right, cool. Check this out. When you eat food, it breaks down in your blood into something called glucose. Do you know what glucose is? 
Oh, he's like, sugar. And I was like, oh, so this is all just nonsense? He's like, yes. <laughs> yeah. That that's a that's okay. a pretty that's a pretty great uh Dr. Cashy impression, by the way. Oh, yeah. It was just like and he was so like just deadpan with it. And yeah. he just like let me sit with it. He's like, you yeah. good now? Like, oh. <laughs> But like to your point, like breaking it down to that foundational stuff, right? And understanding like what's a necessary driver versus what is just correlated with the outcome. Like that ties back to what we were talking about with the earlier workouts. Like put one inch on your arm in 24 hours. This was the workout that Ronnie Coleman used. You're like, man, I don't, I don't know if I have much in common with Ronnie Coleman. But yeah. he always goes back to those basics and the idea of uh, ultimate weight loss success being behavioral. Yeah. Right? You can only deprive yourself of stuff for so long. And if you still want that stuff, like you'll find a way to eat it because yeah. if you're not able to track that progress, then who cares, right? You're like, it doesn't matter. And then you go off the plan. But if you can incorporate all that and understand like foundationally, then you have a chance for the long term. Yeah. It, and wait, so go back, go back to, so how did uh, chaos and pain lead you to uh, Dr. Kachi? He was interviewed there. Oh, Okay. Yeah, he was, um, I think, also working with Mountain Dog, John Meadows, RIP. Rest oh, in peace. Man, that one hurt, man. It was a, it was a rough year last year. Uh, a, a number of, uh, you know, or these last two years, uh, John Meadows, Bud Jeffries. Um, recently, uh, Doug Brinoli. And I know there's, there's a couple other there's guys. Several others, too, I believe. Who? There's, there's several others on yeah. top of that. Yeah. Meadows um, was, I don't know, do you remember, were you ever an elite FTS guy? Um, I mean, I was familiar with it. There I never was, like, dove in too much, but. Fair, fair. So John Meadows, did you follow John Meadows at all? Hey, everybody. Yeah, yeah. The I'm early videos, you. like, that was the only person I would listen to for bodybuilding. He was very, he was very persuasive with meatheads. Right. Meadows occupied that fantastic niche of getting like barbell only like cool guys to use machines, but he was so tricky with it. Still frozen. You're back. Can you hear me now? Yep, looks like you're back. Um, you were saying uh, John Meadows was very persuasive. Yeah, so I would say like that was a period of time where uh, like barbell only was very very masculine, right? Like you you touch machines like you're a pussy. Like yeah. uh, everybody big uses barbells, right? And he was like, hey, it's cool, but check this out. If you do a hamstring curl first, you protect yourself from injury. Like you get a little pad to squat to like, fair enough. Like, let's check it out. Right. Like all the meters would be like, fine. But like, I'm, I'm really a barbell guy. This is just my warm up exercise. Yeah, right. Sure. And then like from there, like in like week four of the training, he'd be like, Hey, switch the barbell out for like a leg press. Like, don't worry. I won't tell anybody. Yeah. Like in four weeks. Like we'll come back and check out the barbell again. Right. It was like, all right. Like that still cool like i still use barbells <laughs> then he'd be like like around week three he'd be like, hey is your lower back feeling a little bit better like you know just like walking around do you feel less compressed He's like hmm maybe <laughs> right so like, just kind of like meeting people where they are like he had those workout videos with dave tate i don't know if you ever watched those whereas like they would like squat with like a hack squat to like yep. yeah. those were nuts those were favorite yeah. what was your like go-to workout pump up video well, so I'll, I'll tell you this. I didn't very early on. I got away from like getting pumped up. I forgot why. I know part of it was the idea was like my resting ability, my readiness. I wanted it to be higher than people's like peak ability. Right. And so I forget there's a, there's a number of inputs into that. You're probably thinking of the same names and sources, but that was my idea. So I didn't look at things to get pumped up. Um, 
the, all, the last time I remember that was back in the Greg Plitt days. Oh, yes. Speaking of muscle and fitness. And Greg, <laughs> but at those times, I was like, how the fuck am I going to do any of that? I want to do it. But this guy is like yelling and he's got chains on and he's like sweating and like throwing shit. <laughs> like That's awesome. <laughs> and then I would walk into the gym and you, there's no, there's no soundtrack. So I'm like, damn, I don't know if I can do that. That looks like it hurts. And, uh, but yeah, that I did. Although I did find inspiration from Ziz videos. Of course. Of course. As well. Back in the day, right? He spoke to the, the skinny guy. Yeah. And I think at that point, like as crazy as it sounds, that early in fitness, because there's so much more money in weight loss and there's so many more people struggle with weight loss, Ziz was kind of the first like, aspirational like you can go from skinny to to jacked right and with other words inserted in there yeah what, what ziz had a huge influence on me i because i remember seeing him on i forget what the uh, the the website was um something that, it was this website that did these like profiles of like random unheard of like oh you're talking about simply shredded Simply shredded. Oh man, that was the best. <laughs> are they still around? Yeah, yeah they are. Uh, yeah. At least, at least, like last time I checked was a, was a few years ago. But I first found Ziz there, and then it, and then I kept up with him a little bit, and then I didn't really fought like go a little, any deeper until I found out he died in what it was like 2011. Yes. Uh, and those bit like what like ziz if he would have been around now like he would be the king of all the fucking fitness youtube absolutely right he was he was pre-modern social media viral he was the first guy like all no you know all of these all the guys that started popping up around 2013 they were all heavily influenced by ziz uh matt ogus uh Jeff Otto, Said, there's a couple other names I'm forgetting. Days, yep, bro. yep. Uh, um, but uh, oh, speaking of other names, uh, Louis Simmons also, who was he? He passed away last year or the year before. He did. Yeah, he was. I think older though, right? He, so he really. was. He was definitely older, um, but just. Man, I was just thinking of like just popped into my head. Oh, because uh, I was talking to you know um, uh, Mike. Uh, his Instagram is uh, the Neuro Strength Coach. That sounds familiar. Um, he we were talking about it. We did we we talked the other day, um, but because he runs Conjugate, like that's what they do over there. Um, that's why that popped in my head. Did you ever run? the oh, of program? course or i uh you may have done this one as well do you this the name joe defranco ring a bell west side yeah. for skinny bastards the bomb.com yeah. he had the the like abcd structure right and you could pick it was like a choose your own adventure and yeah. it was perfect for that like do it with the boys because you had like you would start with like max effort box jumps Right, yep. so like you and the the bros would like load up the plates and then like trust each other to like hold them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, while you're like kneeing yourself in the face to get aerial, I think we all did our first like Bulgarian split squat from that move from that workout. <laughs> yeah, the bomb, bro. I remember there was like a photo. I remember this so clearly of a guy doing a Bulgarian split squat, loaded down in chains, like like arms popping, like Clay Matthews looking dude. And I was like, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, dude. I feel like I, I feel like I know exactly which photo you're talking about too. Yes. I will shout out because I, I think his content is so good and has been so good for so long. Dante Trudell, DC training. Did you read oh. any of that stuff? Dog crap, they called it. Oh, dog crap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dog yeah. crap yes, was awesome. And the main contribution I would say it gave was the idea of quantifying progression. And then yeah. everything you did served that progression, right? And that was a real brain breaker for me because I was always like, well, 
of course I could do more sets and more reps, but at some point that doesn't have a logical end. And when you pick movements, yeah. it's like something like body weight movements, hard to build much muscle mass past a certain point just because of the difficulty of loading it. But DC really hammered home like, hey, like train heavy, train hard, progress, eat to support that, supplement this stuff to take care of your health. That's it. That's all there is. Yeah. The stronger you are the, with more reps, the bigger the muscle you're going to carry. It's that simple. Yeah. Yeah, no, that I remember looking at the dog crap stuff uh, as well. Um, yeah, it's crazy. You you forget about all these different uh, 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 influences and, and names over the years. Um, I'll, I'll tell you another one who heavily influenced me. Um, Matt Perryman. Um, squat every day. Why did we squat every day? Why did we do that? But I was my Chinese Olympic weightlifters. Remember that trend? Yeah. Everyone yeah. was like, they're so jacked. I have to do everything just like yeah. them to be back too. Yeah. Um, although I will say, I never, my squat never went up, like no matter what I did. Like, <laughs> and then I did six months of, of squat every day. And for the first time, like, like I always struggled like 315 was like a struggle and it wasn't an everyday like it was going to have to be a special day meanwhile my deadlift is like you know without a warm-up 405 right. 15 on a back squat no like I look like I've never lifted in my life I went uh, squat every day took me from when I started it, it was like 265 to 345 like that's that was my best squat ever and I was like Okay. I, I, I do like, I did. And I, you know what I loved about it? Same as basketball. I could just show up, squat, I'm done. I'm out. Like, 15. But the thing is though, like, then what happens to the rest of your body, the progression in the rest of your movements? You know, right? I, I had a, I mean, my experience with it was, was one of my favorite ones. Cause I, well, I don't know if I looked much different, my wife said my calves looked bigger. I was like, <laughs> I was like, that's good. Did you have to uh, ask though? But what? Did you have to ask though to get that? Like, well, I guess your calves look bigger. No, 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 no. She was like, what have, you been, <laughs> what have you been doing? Your calves look a little bit bigger. I was like, oh, nice. I'm every day. <laughs> Only time I ever asked that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but my my deadlift went up i hit i hit prs on deadlifts uh for reps and i hadn't i didn't touch the deadlift whereas it never works the other way around like well so the squat thing's funny right because i'm guessing you also have relatively long legs relative to your torso and so i don't know about you but i squatted to make my legs bigger right but at some point going up in weights required me to do things with my stance and with the way i carried the bar which resulted in using less leg for the yeah. moment, using more weight. Right. And then I was like, wait a minute, I started this to get bigger legs and I'm now I'm tweaking the movement to take my legs out of it as much as I can. Yeah. What the hell happened? Yeah. It's like, right? a, and then like a the low bar, you ever squat low bar? I, it never, it never felt good for me. Well, like that I, makes sense. <laughs> yeah. Like I, how it works. Like, do you know why it results in being able to lift more weight? Yeah. Yeah. Like how it's just like you're jamming your shoulder like that. Yeah. It sucks. Like, again, like the silliness of not like diverting from what you wanted in the first place. Right. Yeah. It, it's yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's very interesting for sure. Uh, where it's like, you know, okay. You're is more turning more and more into a good morning, uh, than anything else, you know? Yes um wh okay what do you think about this so right now i i i was looking at my books and i was like oh you ever read beyond broad that was was that stewart stewart, stewart mcroberts roberts i was gonna say robertson but yes for sure so it was a big he was a big proponent of the 20 rep squad and blah 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 so i was like uh hmm, i could i would like my legs to get a little bit bigger 
So I've been doing that. So it's 20 reps, you know, uh, adding, you know, whatever it's, it's, uh, adding as little weight as possible per, you know, workout or whatever, and three seconds up and three seconds down. And I'm like, this is, we'll see what happens. But have, did you ever do, uh, any of those, like, you know, either the 20 rep or, um, those, uh, what are those other, there's a couple other really intense squat programs. Uh, well, there is one where you would go of, up to, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Small off Shaco, all those good ones. But the interesting thing about the 20 is there was, there was at least one workout where you had a 20 as a back offset. I don't remember who did it. <laughs> that sounds like uh yeah. I mean, I actually, I like 20 as a rep range for leg movements though okay. because i think that if you can if you can progress it doesn't really matter what rep range you select and at 20 you also get bro science opinion some cardiovascular benefits oh the, the right now the weight's not heavy enough to challenge well i'm not even going to say that because with three seconds it's anything is brutal for 20 yeah. minutes. but like i'm fucking like it's i'm standing up there for you know, three or four breaths before I can go. Well, so I would ask you this, right? Like if the purpose is to get big legs, do you feel that your legs are the first thing to tap out when it comes to squats, like barbell squats? Because I'd be willing to guess something else might go first. Probably, probably my, yeah, probably not legs. It's, I would say probably low back, back. Yes right? Always. And so I would say that if the purpose is to build your legs, do you have something like a hack squat? No, we don't have one over here. Yeah. Like even a leg press, right? Because if the purpose is to build meat on your legs then taking your lower back out of the equation probably benefits. Yeah. That you can apply the sense. same principles of twenties. Yeah. And, and which is why I, uh, actually Dr. Cashy had me run, uh, a couple of John Meadows programs, um, early on yeah um oh it was the creeping death you do that one oh dude i wonder <laughs> if you're doing them at the same time what what years was what was that for you that was like deep 20 like 2014 15 energy i want to say did you have the cashew cream yeah, i gotta show you i just found thing. this i gotta show this to you what do you still do you still do the cashew creamsicle you ever drink one of those no, you know what? I never tried the cashy creamsicle. Bro, I don't, I don't, I take it every single workout. No lie. I've modified it over the years, but essentially very simple. Gatorade powder for dextrose. He recommends orange and then vanilla whey isolate. And it tastes just like a creamsicle. Exactly. And so you can put salt in there too, but I'm, uh, my calories are quite high now. So I have like a hundred grams of dextrose powder in Jesus Christ. What's, what are your calories right now? A little over 4,000, which is actually not high for me either. It tends to go up much more than that. That's fucking nuts. That's it's fucking effort, nuts. man. Like, I, I don't know about you, but I'm not from a people that are designed to be big. Dude. Uh, uh, well, you know, it's, that's, yeah, it's really interesting. It's really interesting. Um, I'm the smallest guy in my family, actually. I have two. Huh? Like after lifting and everything? Yeah. Like I'm I'm 155 pounds. You do acting work and stuff though, right? Yeah, yeah. But it, this is not for a lack of like not wanting to get bigger. Um like or or trying. Um I just think uh I, I, you know, that the thing that this, this influenced me for so long and it was because of my injuries. And then in CrossFit, I had a lot of injuries too. I got strong, but I had a lot of injuries. And then I learned about, you know, um, all the stuff that I learned from like Pavel and, you know, Dan John and leaving reps in the tank and all this stuff. And, um, wanting to be like the the injury thing was so big for me that then I was like I stayed away from really pushing the limit for a long time um and 
So at those times I was like, I was getting stronger, but then I wasn't doing uh, like, I wasn't taking anything to failure at all. Uh, yeah. And I don't think I treated the squat or the leg press with the proper frame of mind in order to actually get bigger, you know? Um, you say it was then, like missing from it. Like what, what would you have to do to push it further? Well, so part of the thing, actually uh, the acting thing does play into it. Cause I remember I told Dr. Cashy, I told Huggy too. I was like, I, I, I need to be close enough to being really lean at any given time. And I was just deathly afraid. My entire life, I was just like deathly afraid of being fat. It's like, I don't want to be fat. I don't want to look fat. I'm strong. I'm athletic. I don't care. You know, I was obsessed with trying to get to being 180, but then I was like, fuck this. Like, I'm good. I got up to 185 one time and uh, I was just basically, I was 40 pounds overweight is what it was. <laughs> Damn. That's the thing though. Like I think he, Dr. Cash in particular was big on keeping people lean, right. And yeah. all the health benefits that come from that, that accrue over the long term. Yeah. And recognizing that, you know, people like to shit on BMI tables, but for the most part, from an actuarial perspective, they're pretty good. They're yeah. pretty good. And so if you look at somebody who's, how tall are you? 5'11". So you're what, around 155. I think the, the considered ideal weight is 165. Yeah. Meatheads like to get pissed off about that, but it's it's an actuarial reality. So you can do things to counteract that risk, but being bigger is tougher on your body. It always is. 100%. And, and it's just like um, 165 at 5'11", with around the same body fat, you're fucking huge. Like you're fucking, you know, like that's a big, strong human. If, if you're lean, you know, um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, and I, so that always is like, a, and then to your point of like, well, why are you doing this? And I, over the years, I clarified this for myself. Huggy helped me a lot with this as well. Um, it was like, Oh, I don't actually care about being 180, 190. I just care about looking really good mm -hmm. and being athletic and strong as, you know, possible. Um, and, and it took me a while to kind of close that loop and yep. like figure that out. And I was like, oh, there, the, I, I don't need to be X, Y, or Z. And uh, am I willing to do the things to, get to that and i was like oh no i'm not yeah to your point it's not about the number it's how you think that num you'll feel at that number yeah and, and i thought i thought that's the number that it would give me that feeling you know well i can tell you dude i told trevor i was like trevor i want to be a super heavyweight powerlifter at 308 and he was like <laughs> why I was like, I don't know. Cause like, you know, I'm taller. So like leverage is wise. Like if I build myself out to that, I'll be really strong. He's like, yeah, but then you'll be 300 pounds and miserable. Yeah. Plus, like if you were going to be 300 pounds, do you think you and I would have started working together like to start with anyway? Like it's, it's not in the cards for you, son. Like, sorry. And yeah. that's okay. But yeah. it took a long time to accept that. Right. Cause I was like, those are the strongest people, the biggest people. Yeah. Yeah. And I was like, well, maybe that's not what I'm really looking for. Yeah. What what are what are your goals right now for your own training and nutrition? Or, Honestly, man, it sounds so boring, but to be consistent, you know, to be able to prioritize it, even when it's difficult to prioritize. And I think when we were younger, we took for granted the, the amount of time we would just spend in the gym. We're like, well, I'm always going to do this. But as you get older and life happens... Yeah, you don't necessarily do that. So being able to be accountable to myself, to be consistent, that's really all I'm looking for at this stage. Yeah, that's no, that's dope. Um, uh, hundred percent agree with like, definitely took it for granted how much time we would spend in the gym back in the day. Yeah. Um, but this is something that people don't take into consideration. And then, you know, fitness people don't share this, but um, like do you, you, you know, with all everything you got going on, you, it can be a challenge to actually go and work out for us as well, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. But that's what makes it so rewarding. Right. And then you're like, you're like, man, I, I was able to do this 
like in spite of my excuses and then like yeah. hopefully it gets easier yeah and, and knowing oh i didn't need uh 10 hours in the gym per week actually uh i can get what i need and what i want with a fraction of the time um which is you uh i'm sure you know greg o'gallagher mm -hmm. yeah which people shit on him and i was like i mean the framework he shows people is that's one of the reasons why it's you know he has the success he does obviously he's doing a lot of other things as well as far as like his marketing and whatnot but like his the simplicity of that program is just makes sense like that's that's the way to do it for for most people um yeah it also was one of the first programs to kind of take a strong stance against the like hey there's always like you have to train your legs a lot why right so that you can impress other guys on the internet with pictures of your legs like who really cares and so if you have finite time and you have other priorities here's a really simple roadmap to get the things you actually want not the stuff you pretend you want yeah that went over like crazy yeah yeah so true so true uh yeah and he he does such a great job of breaking that down uh it's a little over the top sometimes for me but like the 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 way he goes about it and his program is like this it's a good program you know it's a good methodology for people to kind of grasp and understand things it's not wrong which I think counts for a lot, right? Like he emphasizes like compound movements, getting stronger, caloric deficit through lifestyle mechanism, right? But like without being a nerd about it, he's like, hey, just wake up, have an espresso and just leave the food in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what's it called? Uh, we, gotta, we gotta hit, we didn't even hit it yet. So we gotta hit, we have two things to cover. Very, these are probably the most important out of everything we talked about. Uh, wrestling and uh 80s and 90s action movies okay which one are you want to take man uh, well i'm gonna let you take the lead on these okay There's let's go action movies. movies let's start there so i actually was uh, born and raised in thailand part of that involved at the time there was no streaming services and stuff like that so the the local cable provider was too cheap to get current movies but that meant 80s, 90s action movies galore. I would probably pay more money than I do now for streaming services to have that back. Yeah. <laughs> channels that ran like Die Hard, Steven Seagal movies, Jean Claude Van Damme, like all the greats, like all the Rambo movies, all the Rocky movies. That was a great time in cinema, man. I'll, I'll say that. Like the, the original Predator movie. I didn't even watch the remake. I was scared. To, I didn't even watch the trailer of the remake. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't watch it either. It's like Disney fied Predator. Yeah. Nah. Uh, there's no, you know, there's no, I don't know. I, I'm like, I can't think of anything that has been remade that was like worth watching versus I know you remade this because you know you can make a lot of money on it and you probably yeah. didn't give it the respect and the love that this deserved, you know. Right, right. Absent the commercial success of the first, you wouldn't have made this second movie, and it shows. Yeah, yeah. Exception to that, I'll say, is Bad Boys 2. That Probably was not a great example, because then they remade it, but as a sequel, Bad Boys 2 was awesome. Sequel, yeah. Sequel-wise, is good. Um, uh, uh, This is, I mean, I guess still action-related, more recent, um, just as an example of, like, I never see movies that are remade that are done well. But I thought Jumanji with The Rock and, and Chris, I mean, not Chris, Kevin, Kevin Hart, I thought yeah. both of those movies were well done, but they were almost entirely unrelated to, other than like Jumanji, they were completely, you know, unrelated to, you know, the first movie, which on its own is one of the best movies, you know, of all time, but. Um, yeah, remakes, I can't think of any that were very good. M my, uh, trying to think, like, if I had to pick, Predator is just so good. Like, the first, the you walk in, Dylan, you son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. 
<laughs> yeah, you got you pushing too many papers. <laughs> so good. Uh, what else? There's, uh, of course, um, blood sport. Like, oh, I mean, naturally, I made my wife watch it, and now she's a fan. Um, what else? Uh, all the Bruce Lee movies. Oh, uh, of course, of course. What's a what would be one that is in your opinion really good but most a lot of people haven't watched i'm gonna i I don't know if it counts but i throw my hat in for total recall total recall uh that's that's a pretty good one um they remade that one too right yes i didn't see the remake did you no no (laughs) you didn't trust it what's your favorite 80s 90s action movie I'm going to give you a slightly off, uh, a, a slightly, well, it's still action and it's still 90s. Um, for me, there's, and and the reason for this is because I love Christmas. So Christmas was like a very big deal uh, at San Jose Barbell. Like we do all kinds, every year we would make everybody watch Jingle All the Way. That and, really awesome. Turbo Man. <laughs> Dude, Jamie, that's a sequel I would watch. Uh, but that guy died. Who? The guy that plays the next door neighbor. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did? I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. That movie is awesome. Dude, so good. Sinbad, Arnold. That's uh, the the bad Santas, the 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 mall, the the mall Santas who are running the crooked oper- uh, operation. I forget what his name is. Uh, oh, is to so the warehouse. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I would go with that. But so if I'm going non-Christmas, shit. Um, oh, I, and there's a reason for this. This probably wouldn't be the top of most people's list is Commando. Excellent. I love it because it was the first one I saw like my uncles at that age uh they were like late teens and so they were watching all these you know action movies and so the first movie I watched over and over again was Commando that's awesome Uh, movie to watch over and over yeah one uh what about what about any recent what's like the genre fell off for a while but i feel like there's some good contenders nowadays um what would you say today are some of your favorite action movies well i'm curious when you say like some contenders now what are you thinking of specifically because i i don't know if it's just me being old but i don't i look at listings for movie theaters now and i'm like nah, i don't want to say any of these things and i used to love going to the movies yeah, I movies going to the movies is one of my favorite things to do. And I agree with you most like the movies are just there's like nothing good to watch. Um, although I think that's going to shift. I think it's shifting because I mean, the pendulum has to swing. People are going to get tired of all the pandering fucking bullshit, you know. Oppenheimer uh, is coming. You going to see that one? Which one? Oppenheimer, the new uh, Christopher Nolan. Oh, I, I didn't even know about that one. Yeah, bro, that one's gonna be heavy. I'm looking forward to anything Christopher Nolan. I'm down. Um, John Wick. John oh, yeah. Wick. Of there, there's another sequel coming out, isn't there? I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I'm worried about the Fast and Furious effect. They've done okay so far, but like, they're, I don't know if they're pushing their luck now. You know. You know, number. I think I, I don't remember which one out of this two or three, one was just super ridiculous, but I was like, man, it's John wick and it's Keanu Reeves. I'm still going to watch it and it's still fun. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Um, oh, one of my, this might be one of my favorites of all time. Wrath of man. Did you watch that? I don't know if I know that. One. Jason Statham. Guy Ritchie. Oh, this is a newer Jason Statham too. I do like Guy Ritchie. Saying the right okay. words. Okay. 
I'm going to, this is what you got to do. So my homework. Homework. And anybody who made, makes it to this point, actually, I'm going to clip this just to give this homework. Um, go watch Wrath of Man. I mean, the cast, I'm sold. I love, like, quick. So one of my favorite movies is Snatch. Oh, so Like, the good. quick camera work, right? Like, I'm a big fan of that. I thought the, uh, the King Arthur movie was actually pretty solid, for example. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Um, this suit too, so I'm pumped. yeah it oh man this is i really like i thoroughly enjoyed this movie um and the soundtrack is just like the whoever did the soundtrack on this fantastic job oh it's on prime yeah i think so done i'm gonna have dinner with my fiance she's done for it this is what it's gonna this is what it's gonna <laughs> We'll, we'll have, we might have to do one just recapping uh, Wrath of Man and action movies. Um, hey man, I'm in. Dude, the, uh, what's it called? Uh, a- any other uh, thoughts on action movies? Because we have, we're going to, ha- we have to cover wrestling at least for a few minutes here. Well, I'll transition in there. I have grown to appreciate the, uh, you know, like the the sling wire, like Chinese fight choreography. Okay. Like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. There's one called Kung Fu Hustle. You ever see that one? Yep. Kung Fu Hustle was awesome. That was the that was the. Oh no, I'm thinking of uh, Kung Fu Hustle. I, I know I've seen that. I was confusing it for a second with uh, the soccer one. Shout soccer. You know what I'm talking about? No. I'm gonna. I need to. I'm gonna have to look this up because now I'm like soccer and fighting. Yeah, it was like Shaolin soccer. I kind of know what you're talking about. Yeah, this looks on brand. Yeah, similar style movie. Like outrageous fighting, but with comedic plot lines, kind of thing. Oh yeah, and also by Stephen Chow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hey, yeah. I, I, yeah. Kung Fu Hustle. So oh, good. another one, man. Have you seen The Raid? No. Oh, that's your homework then. The Raid. No, really. is, they've made a couple of them, but it's an Indonesian action movie. Best fight movie you have seen. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to watch this one then. Pull up a trailer for it for sure. Yeah, I think I think I've seen like. Uh, uh like some of the fight clips from this one it's a good one it's a doozy you still there yep you cut out good now yep cool um even chow is the the tie the tying thread here Ip man amazing oh yeah of course of course yeah you know what i want to i want to take back my statement of like oh there's not a lot of good action movies uh that's only when we look through the perspective of hollywood but there's there's been plenty of good movies now that we start to like go through them um yeah there there's been a number oh nobody with uh bob odenkirk interesting this was a super sleeper one for me like one of my clients recommended it good cast too great great cast fascinating yeah that looks like a good one too yeah that that's a good double feature if you wanted to double feature uh wrath of man and nobody it's a good uh, back to back. yeah um oh this i was i was gonna show this to you earlier speaking of uh ridiculous things um and then we'll 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 tie into the the wrestling to to wrap up but um, er, these are this is actual footage early days of crossfit and this is one of the dumb things that we used to do uh this was those OG CrossFit days, right? When people would have those compilations. Like this is back when every joke about CrossFitters was them getting hurt. 
Yeah. Although luckily I never did anything stupid the way in those videos, but just in general, I'm like, why would you be doing this? And what are you doing? Uh, we were talking about that box jump where you're just trying to knee yourself in the face. You look like John Tucker from John Tucker must die here. <laughs> John Tucker got hops. Dude, my knees were basically, <laughs> basically in my face, but the beautiful part about it is like, that was like one of the most fun times. Uh, yeah. The YouTube you know, days were different. Yeah. And just being in the gym was different. Now it's like, it's still fun. It's a different fun. Um, but there was something different at that. It was its own little moment in time, you know? For sure. For sure. Um, wrestling. How, how into wrestling are you or were you? I was for a very long time. So when I was growing up in Thailand, again, not many channels. So Saturday, mm -hmm. Sunday, right? You had the Raw SmackDown. And then if you had any of the pay-per-view events, they would be there too. Yeah. So I would say that it laid the, the, the roots for me being a meathead. So for whatever reason, like, you know, those random memories that end up connecting, but you don't really know how. So I remember watching WWF like at my grandparents' house. And it was Sting when he came up, up out of the ring. You know, and I remember seeing that. I was like, this is the coolest shit I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Dude. Like, this is badass. <laughs> Dude, that's such, such, uh, yeah. Uh, I, again, similar, it was like, so I would go visit my uncles in India and like they would have all these old school, like, you know, well, I don't even know if it's old school because it's current at that time. <laughs> but like, all like this is in the mid 90s early mid 90s to all the 90s so they'd have all like the um hulk hogan macho man yeah. um, rick flair in the heyday and i was like oh this this is dope this is dope um do you listen to um uh you know who will sasso is why does that name sound familiar so he he's an actor he was on Mad TV. He did the 10 minute podcast uh, with Chris D'Elia and Brian Callen for a long time. And now he's doing this podcast with um, uh, another guy called Dudesy, which the whole the whole uh, podcast is produced and made by an AI. Um, but I bring him up because he loves wrestling and he does all of these wrestling imp impressions and it's just like it kills me it's fucking hilarious do you watch wrestling as well or is, or is that the you would say like the main link you still there yeah yeah i was saying with uh with those impressions like is that the main do you still watch wrestling like did you watch it primarily when you were younger yeah, I, I watch, I mean, I don't, I didn't watch any of the recent stuff for a long time because it was just like, not like, it's not the stuff that we grew up on. Like, I think I probably last time I really watched wrestling was like the, like the rock era. And then like the very beginning of John Cena era. Yeah. Yeah. Like when he was more like, he was more like Ali G. You remember yeah. that? Like. They, they scrubbed him up a little bit to be more of a face, but I feel like at one point he was this kind of like semi John Cena ish character. I mean, yeah. you know, semi like Ali G ish character. Speaking of, uh, I always thought he was a terrible actor and like his action movies were not good. Did you ever see the WWE movies they made with him, the action movies? No, but I remember watching yeah. it. I was like, but he has found his little niche. Uh, he's been a few, his acting has definitely gotten better, but he's, he's so good at comedic roles. Um, there was, there was one where him, he's like this couple, they meet him at some resort, like this black couple is going to some vacation and they run into John Cena and his wife and there is all this craziness that happens but John Cena's character is like this very like over the top like you know wild quirky character 
And he's just so good at that, that role. It, it's like, it's really funny. It's, he's really good. <laughs> he rocks the like ironically huge thing, you know, yeah. which I think is hilarious. You know, like you would find him like in the front row of the opera, just being huge. Yeah. <laughs> like some opera. Yeah. Just, hey, just a, uh, you know, typical Thursday night opera outing. I love it. Um, shit. Uh, well, we could keep going forever, but I got to get back to the store and then back to the gym um back on the grind man back on the grind um any anything uh that you have to share or want to share or contact or anything like that if somebody wants to reach out to you or whatever Sure. Yeah, I'll do the usual bit. So I guess like if anything sounded familiar here in terms of, uh, you know, taking short term approaches to long term challenges, hit us up www.trevorcashynutrition.com. Uh, you learn some some interesting stuff about Dr. Cashy, see the, some of the transformations that we've made for clients and, uh, you know, learn more about that there. But otherwise, appreciate you having me on my friend glad we could uh, connect there were some shared topics. It's always cool to see that those experiences are uh, more widely shared than initially thought, right? It's always kind of fun. You're like, no way, somebody else as well. Uh, and I think there's a lot of people out there who likely can relate to some of these things we talked about today. So uh, thanks for having me. 100%, yeah. And, and I would, if anybody looks like at, uh, anybody is wanting to, you know, I know we cover a lot of random, well, not random, but different topics but if somebody is wanting to transform their body and do it in a much more relaxed and and smoother way i would highly recommend checking out the website um and i'll, I'll put it in the links too because i also worked with uh dr kashi and you know tkn for a long time so um anybody listening you know uh and you need some help I would go check it out and, and, uh, reach out if, if you, uh, are looking for that. So, so, uh, appreciate you brother. Thanks for having me, man. Talk to you soon. Yes, sir. Later.